My friend James is a bike fitter with over 20 years of experience. In today's episode, 10 more things that he loves. The Ergon VCLS seat post, quite often found on uh, Canyon's bikes, but it is actually made by Ergon, is a leaf spring carbon seat post comprised of two components. The reason I love this is not because of the suspension design, but because of the ease in which you can adjust the tilt on it. It's got uh, a bolt in the bottom of it that locks together the two pieces, which basically means that you you, lose, you take the seat post out, loosen the bolt, put the seat post back in, get the saddle rail, sorry, the saddle angle correct, pull the seat post back out again, tighten the bolt, your saddle tilt's set. Uh, for somebody who spends way too much time in my life adjusting seat posts. This is the best seat post in terms of ease of adjustment on the market. It's fantastic. At the same time, it's offering a fantastic level of compliance, like vertical compliance for, for the rider, because of its leaf, sp leaf spring design. The Four Ears Handlebar. It's a, it's a product that we started importing from the, uh, the Far East uh, a year or so ago, uh, at, at great expense because of the MOQ, but we, we bought them in because they are available in narrower sizes. So the smallest commercially available handlebar width is usually 36 centimeters. That's measured center to center across the point of the handlebar where the controls are located. Frankly, for, for smaller individuals, and you don't even have to be that small, we've got personal friends who, are, who run 34 centimeter bars, it's just too wide. So we went out and we started trying to find 32 and 34 centimeter bars and we found this company. Um, and it's a real game changer for some of our smaller riders. They're cheap, they're 50 quid, but uh, like I say, real game changer if it's right for you. The Lake CX-238. This is an absolute game changer if you've got wide feet. It is a wide fitting shoe as standard. So if you've got wide feet, you probably don't need the wide version of it. The wide version of it is colossally wide, big enough to poach a salmon in. Bovine leather upper uh, material, double bow closure, carbon fiber sole. Uh, but the main dip, the main benefit of this is that it is wide, and like I say, the, there aren't it, there isn't a single shoe on the market that is wider than this. Even the uh, extra wide versions of Lake's uh, higher end models. So, uh, but again, it's important to ensure that the thing fits. So make sure that your feet are measured and assessed before you buy. Also worth noting that they they do a, a mountain bike slash gravel version of it. Uh, it's exactly the same last, exactly the same upper, just obviously has a, a two bolt uh, sole so that you can walk around on. So the, the, it basically allows you to get both a road bike shoe and a mountain bike shoe that are exactly the same. So you don't have to mess around with your fit or your position on your bike when you move between two bikes or different, two different shoes. Riser drop handlebars, sorry, this is not one. They are typically made by, so Specialized were the first people to make them. They made a, a handlebar called the Hover Bar, which was originally designed for the second generation Venge, but they're now available for like a, like a more conventional fitting front end. Uh, and they offer a 25 and even a 40 millimeter uh, rise. There's another brand called Genetic that makes a 25 millimeter rise. And the, the benefit of this is that it basically enables you to fit the bar and get the front end you know, 25 to 40 millimeters higher without having to change the bike or invert the stem, which can have negative implications on, on the handling of the thing. This can help with neck, shoulder, and hand issues usually. In recent years, Shimano have developed a new lever design, which is uh, intended specifically for smaller hands. What they've done is reduced the length of the body. It's only available in the 105 hydraulic group set, uh, historically the 11 speed, uh, but what it does is it reduces the reach to the back of the hood, like I say, specifically intended for smaller hands. Thank you for Shimano for being considerate. If you have a difficulty reaching the brake levers on the drops, this can be as a result of the bar being too wide or the reach being too long. But if your bar width and reach are optimized and you still have the same issue, might be worth thinking about the Shimano short reach brake levers. Generally speaking, the shortest reach handlebar you can get is about 75 millimeters. This one you've brought in is about 70. Specialized have a short and ultra short reach bar, which is 65 millimeters in the reach. The reach being this metric here from the center of the bar, sorry, from the center of the bore to where the, the control is located. Uh, and again, this can be a really great way of lopping reach off of the front end of the bike. Particularly as a last resort, if you've gone as short as you can on the stem, uh, then, then the specialized short reach handlebar might be a really good uh, means of, of getting those handlebars or getting those controls closer to you. The adoption by SRAM and Shimano of 
shorter crank arm lengths. As of last year, Shimano are now offering 105 and Altegra in 160 millimeter cranks. SRAM are offering 160 millimeter in force and rival. It's although still not as short as we'd like, it's certainly going in the right direction, particularly for smaller riders, riders with hip impingements, because the shorter the crank is, the more likely you are, sorry, the, the easier it can be to come through the top of the stroke. This is particularly problematic for very small riders. Historically, the smallest commercially available crank has been 165 millimeters. So we are going in the right direction, could do with, going, could do with them going a little bit shorter, but this is a, this is a big, big move for, uh, for smaller people. Form two, milli <laughs> there. Form two millimeter pedal washers. This is a way of getting the feet further apart uh, to typically improve knee alignment and also relieve pressure from the outside of the feet. It's a, it's a good, it's basically the maximum amount of uh, stance width increase that you can make while still retaining good thread engagement with the pedal. It's a cheap, fast and easy solution to get that stance maxed. And it's compatible with pretty much every pedal system. My purely custom bike fitting jig. This is an infinitely adjustable piece of apparatus that allows us to mimic a rider's bike position. But furthermore, it allows us to optimize the rider's position without the need for their bicycle, without the limitations of their bicycle. Historically in bike fitting, a rider's fit has always been carried out on the bike. The jig allows us to experiment with positions of both the saddle and the handlebar, as well as optimizing things like crank length, all while measuring power, cadence, heart rate, and power and, and torque vectoring. Completely more optimize the rider quickly and efficiently without the need for having to change stem lengths and change handlebar widths. Can you buy them? Yep. Yeah. They're 20,000 pounds. Dogfish video analysis. Now we use it in four different planes, left, right, front and rear, because we like to appreciate that uh, a human being riding a bicycle is a three dimensional uh, entity rather than just filming from one side and hoping that the other side is the same but it's different to motion capture in the sense that it doesn't physically measure the movement of the rider. It just allows us to compare pre and post positions. Furthermore, it does allow us to quantify whether something has changed. So for instance, if we're looking at pelvic stability, you change the saddle and then um, video it again. So you video a rider's position, change the saddle and then video it again. It allows you to quantify whether there is an actual difference. So ultimately backing up whether our changes have made any improvement to the rider's position. We're utilizing cameras that are operating at 60 frames per second. To give you an indication, the industry's leading motion capture system operates at 18 frames per second. So we're operating four times faster in order to track rise movement. It doesn't necessarily dictate our results, but it helps us quantify the outcome. There's 10 more things that James loves. If you have any questions about those, put them in the comment section down below. If you want to book a fit with James, there'll be a link in the description down below to his bike shop's website and subscribe for more.